The Cross Product, Level 1. In this video, we will define a new vector operation called the cross product, also known as the vector product, and sometimes referred to as the area product. In the previous videos, we defined two ways in which you can multiply vectors together. The first was scalar multiplication, which produces a vector, and the second was the dot product which produces a scalar. The third way to multiply vectors is by multiplying one vector by a second vector as to produce a third vector. The first thing to keep in mind about these three separate ways of multiplying vectors is that scalar multiplication and the dot product are defined for vectors in R squared and R cubed. What makes the cross product different from the first two methods is that the cross product is defined only for vectors in R cubed and not R squared. This is extremely important to remember. I repeat, the cross product is defined for vectors in R cubed and not R squared. When working with the cross product, make sure you're using three dimensional vectors. All right, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the geometric definition of the cross product. The cross product is denoted with a classical multiplication symbol, and as the alternative name for this operation suggests, the vector product is itself a vector. To define the cross product between vector A and vector B, we will start by drawing the two vectors with their tails located at the same point. With both vectors aligned at a common point, vector A and vector B will lie in a common plane. Remember, the cross product is defined for vectors in R cubed, so we are dealing with three-dimensional vectors at all times. We define the cross product to be a vector with a direction perpendicular or normal to this plane, which in turn is also perpendicular to both vector A and vector B. The magnitude of this third vector is equal to the product of the magnitudes of vector A and vector b times the sine of the angle theta between vector a and vector b. We measure the angle theta from vector a toward vector b and take the smaller of the two possible angles. Similar to the dot product, theta ranges from 0 to 180 degrees. With the cross product defined this way, the value of sine of theta will always be greater than or equal to 0. This way, the new vector will never have a negative magnitude. Recall that the magnitude of a vector is always a positive number, or zero. By using an angle between zero and 180 degrees, along with sine of theta, we are able to generate magnitudes that are positive, or zero. With the cross product defined this way, vector A and vector B are going to be parallel when theta equals 0 degrees, and will be anti-parallel when theta equals 180 degrees. In addition, the magnitude of the new vector will be equal to 0. So it turns out that the cross product of two non-zero parallel or anti-parallel vectors is always equal to the zero vector. In particular, the cross product of any vector with itself is also equal to the zero vector. We will formally prove these properties in a much later video. When vector A and vector B are parallel, the magnitude of the cross product will be zero. In this case, it will be a minimum. When vector A and vector B are perpendicular, the magnitude of the cross product will be a maximum. When theta is an acute or obtuse angle, the magnitude of the cross product between vector A and vector B will be a fractional portion or percentage of the maximum magnitude. Now let's talk about the direction of the vector produced by the cross product. There are always two directions perpendicular to a given plane, one on each side of the plane. How do we determine on which side will the vector produce from the cross product point towards? By convention, we use the right-hand rule. If we are trying to find vector A crossed with vector B, we can determine the direction 
of the new vector by pointing your right hand fingers in the same direction as vector A. And then curl your fingers towards vector B. When curling your fingers, make sure you choose the smaller of the two possible angles, since theta was defined to be an angle between 0 and 180 degrees. Once you curl your fingers in the direction of rotation, your straight thumb will then point in the direction of the vector produced when you cross vector A and vector B with one another. A second way to think about the right hand rule is by using three fingers, your thumb, index, and middle finger. The index and middle finger will represent the vectors that are being crossed with one another. These are the vectors that are located on the same plane. Your index finger will point in the direction of the first vector, in this case, vector A. And your middle finger will point in the direction of the second vector, in this case, vector B. Once you have aligned those fingers with the corresponding vectors, your thumb will point in the direction of vector A crossed with vector B. Now, on the other hand, if we are asked to find the cross product between vector B and vector A, we would obtain a totally different vector. In this case, we need to point our fingers in the direction of vector B and curl them towards vector A. Again, making sure you choose the smaller of the two angles. You will discover that your thumb now points in the opposite direction. The result is a vector that points in the opposite direction to the cross product of vector A and vector B. This also tells us that the cross product is not commutative. Vector A crossed with vector B is not the same as vector B crossed with vector A. In fact, they have equal lengths but opposite directions. So keep this in mind when dealing with the cross product. We can also illustrate the geometric interpretation of the magnitude of the cross product. If the magnitude of vector A and vector B are represented by directed line segments with the same initial point, then the vectors form adjacent sides of a parallelogram with base equal to the magnitude of vector A and altitude equal to the magnitude of vector B times sine of theta. Recall that the area of a parallelogram is given by the product of the base times the altitude. Thus, the length or magnitude of the cross product of vector A with vector B is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by vector A and vector B. Lastly, let's compare both the dot product and cross product side by side. Many students get these vector operations mixed up since both involve multiplication of vectors. The first thing to remember is that both are operations involving multiplication of vectors. The difference is that the dot product will produce a scalar, and the cross product will produce a vector. In addition, the dot product is defined for vectors in R squared and R cubed. And the cross product is defined only for vectors in R cubed. The geometric definition of the dot product uses the cosine of the angle between both vectors, and the magnitude of the cross product uses the sine of theta between both vectors. And since the cross product also produces a vector, it will have a direction that is normal to the common plane between the two crossed vectors. If n hat represents a unit vector normal to the plane containing the cross vectors, then the cross product can be represented as follows. All right, in our next video, we will go over the component definition of the cross product.